In this episode, we're leaving Montreal and we're heading to Quebec City. We are on our way to Quebec City, staying at the Fairmont because we're going to live out our princess dreams. I'm here with my friend Cal. <laughs> Quebec City is the capital of the province of Quebec. It's a quaint tourist town with the most photographed hotel in the world. This city is unique on this continent, not only surrounded by fortification walls, but the fascinating mixture of French and English architecture spanning four centuries makes it truly a, a unique and wonderful place on this continent. In the fall of 1985, the United Nations recognized the city's uniqueness and designated it a World Heritage Site. If it were lost, it would be a loss to the world as a whole. And it's the North American context in which we find this city. We're walking through the Old Town, and this Old Town is incredible. It recently celebrated 400 years of settlement in 2008, so this town was founded in 1608 by the French. From the West Coast, so we don't really have like the old architecture like this, so it's a lot to take in, and it's really cool. First impression so far? Insane. Definitely one of the most beautiful cities in the Americas, without a doubt. This feels like an alpine town somewhere in France, you know? But then, at the same time, it's like not French. It's not European. It's Quebecois, Canadian. It's really cool. Doesn't it feel like a scene straight out of Beauty and the Beast here? It is incredible. You can almost feel that 400-year-old history. In the heart of Old Quebec, mere steps from all major attractions, sits the legendary Fairmont Le Chateau Frontenac. Welcome to the Chateau Frontenac, the most famous hotel in Canada. Look at this. Yeah, that's right. It's literally a castle. Look at that. In the center of Quebec City is the symbol of Quebec City, and it's a little hard to miss. It is a massive Loire Valley-style castle plunked in the middle of Canada, and it's on top of another castle, which is on top of a fort. It is the grand and majestic Chateau Frontenac. There's a reason why the hotel is, is situated here. We're literally on the spot of the original Fort Saint Louis, so where Champlain resided and, and founded Quebec City and Nouvelle France, and New France. It was built for the Canadian Pacific Railway. It opened its doors in 1893. They hired an American architect, Bruce Price, to design it. They asked him to build a castle on a cliff. It became the symbol of Quebec and is said to be the most photographed hotel in the world. Standing tall, high above the St. Lawrence River. Very amazing. I like this. It's beautiful. It's lovely. The Chateau Frontenac never fails to impress. Just arrived to our hotel and, uh, wow, yeah, yeah. it's a castle. Chateau Frontenac is named after the governor of New France in the 1600s, Louis de Bouade, Count of Frontenac. With more than 600 rooms, upscale restaurants full of fairy tale towers and turrets, and grand, elegant spaces, Chateau Frontenac is a princess's dream castle. From royalty to rock stars. For more than a century, the Chateau Frontenac has welcomed a long list of the world's most famous people, including world leaders. In 1943 and 1944, Canadian Prime Minister William Lyon Mackenzie King hosted U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Together, they hunkered down and planned the invasion of Normandy. It was an amazing piece of history. The, uh, during the planning, they basically took over the entire hotel for over a week. We played an instrumental part in the planning of the major battle of World War II. I think my dad had a summit here. I think so, the Shamrock uh, Summit, yeah. uh, exactly, and uh, which we're very proud of with uh, President Reagan at the time. Many, many of the American presidents, all of the prime ministers of Canada have been here. Queen Elizabeth, Charles de Gaulle, uh, I mean, it's non-stop, the list. Paul McCartney, Leonardo DiCaprio, and the star here in Quebec, the chanteuse à la voix d'or, Céline Dion. Alfred Hitchcock shot quite a few scenes of his movie, I Confess, in 1952. There's a Korean soap opera, supernatural Absolutely. soap opera. Absolutely. And, and that has resulted in what, like more Korean tourism to the hotel? We've had a great wave of Korean and Asian tourists ever since this uh, television series, which is actually apparently the most popular in Asia. The Chateau Frontenac was a key part of the Canadian Pacific Railway's master plan. The idea was to link England with its colonies in Asia through the railway in Canada. This hotel would be the first port for the elite visitors to stay along their journey, as well as a destination point for anyone with the means to stay here. 
people would be taking Canadian Pacific boats from Europe and they would, would arrive here in Quebec City and get on the trains to go out west. And while they were developing the railroads to expand out to British Columbia eventually, what they were doing was they were picking often the best places that they were coming across, the most picturesque, to build what we call these uh, railroad hotels. And those majestic railway hotels included the Empress in Victoria, British Columbia, and the Hotel Vancouver, and many more, crossing Canada along the railway line. All are incredible, all are beautiful, all are très français, but only one can be truly called an icon. I often refer to it as the Statue of Liberty of Canada. It is. Uh, so it I'm is. very proud as a general manager, and we are really often considered the icon or the, uh, the landmark of the province of Quebec. A great opening takes place on December 1893. The hotel counts 170 rooms, all equipped with central heating, electricity in the room, and a fireplace. Luxury that is unbelievable for that time. It is such a great success that already in 1919, we are lacking space. So the Maxwell brothers are mandated to erect a central tower, which now make all the essence of this building. The tower is achieved in 1924, and so the hotel now counts 610 rooms on 20 different floors. In 2018, to celebrate the 125th anniversary of the establishment, the hotel undergoes a major facelift to better reflect its origins and prestige. So the reason that this place is so special to us is actually six years ago in December, we started dating here. It's where we officially started dating. So whenever we can, we kind of try and take the opportunity to come back if possible. Every time that I come here, I'm just always in awe of the history of the architecture and of course of the royal treatment that you receive. This is the entrance area to the lobby. Upon arrival, a bellman will welcome you and collect your bags and bring it to the room. It looks and feels like you are about to enter a castle. This is a classic hotel. It's really an institution. This place looks like a castle. It's very cool. We're super lucky to be staying here. The main lobby is absolutely stunning. From the marble floors, the wood paneled walls, the medieval chandeliers, and to top it all off, this phenomenal painted coffered ceiling, which stretches the entire lobby in all directions. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't this place just amazing? Look at the ceiling. There's great grand staircases, chandeliers. You can also, if you are here with a loved one, go to the pop-up marriage and get married. That's right. We're already married. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also mail a letter. And here you are, right where the elevators are, you got this really nice old mailbox. There is so much character, and so much history in this hotel. So much so that we are now going to talk about a mailbox. Absolutely. What What is it about this mailbox that makes it noteworthy? There's a great story behind the mailbox. Uh, back in World War II, uh, there was a soldier that was staying at the Chateau Frontenac, and he wrote a letter, a postcard actually, to propose marriage. And unbeknownst to us, the card was caught in the uh, in the postal chute. He discovered it in, in the 80s. We tried at the time to find the, the, uh, the lady and the, the gentleman to no avail. An amazing story of lost love, if we sure. could say, that inspired this amazing uh, goblin uh, Korean uh, television series. Yeah, that's right. So there's a Korean soap opera, supernatural Absolutely. soap opera. Absolutely. And it's a romance uh, television series, very, very well followed. This really inspired them for an amazing uh, story of romance between a couple. I have dreamed of staying in here ever since I first saw this hotel in a Korean TV series. De Coréen, se prendre en photo ou envoyer des lettres dans cette fameuse boîte aux lettres-là. Elle est vraiment devenue célèbre. Son apparence digne des contes de fées lui vaut de nombreuses visites. Mais au final, c'est aussi la qualité du service qui fait revenir les voyageurs année après année. Right when you get off the eighth floor, you get this phenomenal view overlooking the St. Lawrence River. Very pretty. Le château compte presque 12 km de corridor et 2000 fenêtres et sa tour centrale mesure près de 80 mètres. What I love about this hotel is like the interior decor. It's so luxurious. It actually looks like a castle. Like it's really beautiful. Hey. Ah, here we go. Did you know something? What? Your mom moved room. She did? She's right there. And oh. you happen to be right there. That's funny. I was in the middle of doing a tour. 
Hey, come on in. We're gonna give you a tour of our room. Welcome to our room. It's a beautiful one. We made it to Quebec City and our room was ready when we got here, which is so blessed. So this is our room from the window, which is so pretty. You can see like all the rooms. Then there's the actual bedroom. So we got two double beds, some fancy paintings. Oh my God, look at the crown molding. They just got all the together here, don't they? With a courtyard view. Of course, view. <laughs> because we're fancy like that. It is very, very beautiful. I love it. The rooms are overall pretty big and spacious at this hotel. I like it. Oh my god, they even have a freaking reading lamp. What the hell? I've never seen this. This is so fancy. Built into the headboard. King bed. By the way, this bed is so comfortable. I slept so good. Sheets are so soft. I'm not sure what kind of sheets these are, but I'm gonna find out and I want to recreate this back in Brooklyn. And we took a tour of the hotel with one of the managers earlier today and yeah. went to a, one of the Fairmont gold levels. This is standard as a gold level as well. And apparently the sheets are even better, so I can't even imagine. <laughs> I've never had this. I don't know about you, Cass. I've never had two French doors that lead to the bathroom. Got double doors, pretty fancy. Standard shower, pretty nice. Got a head. Fainting couch. Fainting couch. New macarons. So what we did when we arrived, we asked if we had any upgrades, and we got upgraded. <laughs> tip, tip guys. Guys, we were upgraded by the staff. They gave us a Trudeau suite. The thing I didn't know is that the suite is $2,500 a night. We got upgraded to the presidential suite. The best upgrade of our lives. And we got an amazing deal too. Look at our beautiful room. It's huge and it's so much bigger than the one that we booked. We booked just like the normal standard one. I can tell you right now, this bed is gonna be amazing. And then behind me is the bathroom. Beautiful mirror and shower. I already had a shower. Oh, it felt so good. We're here in the Grace of Monaco suite. In the entrance, it is a two bedroom suite on the Fairmont Gold floor. In the entranceway, we have the history of Grace Kelly here in Quebec, which was in 1969 when she came for the Winter Carnival. In the main bedroom, we've got some wonderful items that Prince Albert of Monaco has loaned the hotel, items that Princess Grace herself, some artwork that she created. The main living room of the suite is a celebration of Grace Kelly in Hollywood from some of her first films and work that she did. In fact, she actually worked with Alfred Hitchcock. Arriving in Quebec for the two-theater world premiere of Warner Brothers' I Confess are its star, Anne Baxter, and director Alfred Hitchcock. This visit recalls months of work in Quebec. Snow is falling outside the Cartier Theater, but an eager crowd has turned out to greet Miss Baxter and Mr. Hitchcock. Much of I Confess, which also stars Montgomery Clift, was filmed in Quebec, Canada's oldest city. I went up to visit my father in Quebec and uh, watch, watch them uh, shoot. There was a scene where a wonderful German actor called Oe Hasse was doing a very difficult scene from a room in the hotel. And then they cut to Montgomery Cliff walking up to see him on the stage and they took probably four hours to shoot Montgomery Cliff walking up because he had to think about it. Montgomery Cliff the first of the so-called method actors. He preceded Marlon Brando and Jimmy Dean with his introspection. He didn't want to have to deal with all that method stuff. And when he asked Cliff at one point to please look up when he came out of the courthouse because he wanted to cut to the windows, Cliff said, I don't know if I would look up. And of course, anything like that would drive Hitchcock crazy. If you don't look up, I can't cut. Cliff looks, you see what he sees, you see his reaction, that's pure cinema, as Hitchcock used to call it. This is the first large ballroom and concert room in Quebec City. Over the years, hundreds of personalities set foot in this room. Some of them are King George V, King George VI, Queen Elizabeth and Queen Elizabeth II, General de Gaulle, to name a few. However, one of the most magical moments that took place in this room is probably when Celine Dion gave a private concert to the deciders of CBS, Sony Music. This is what really launched her international career. Robert, I'm glad I wore my pink shirt for the Salon Rose. Perfect. We are now in the Salon Rose. This is where the ladies got together to enjoy a cup of tea, while the men preferred to go to the smoking room. But it is in August 1943. 
that took place a major event in this room. This was the Conference of Quebec, when Winston Churchill, Roosevelt, and Mackenzie King sat together to plan the D-Day to end the Second World War. This is a historical room. Lots of history. We did the two Quebec conferences here. 1943 conference really planned the uh, Normandy invasion. 1944, they planned uh, post-World War II uh, Europe uh, here. On peut dire que notre hôtel est important pour la paix dans le monde. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's amazing history. It is fantastic. Good morning. As you can tell by the hair, folks, we had a good night's sleep. The beds were very comfortable. And it's another beautiful day here. Quebec got quite a bit of snow overnight. Ch check this out. And now we're just getting ready to check out. I'm not coming back. <laughs> Council's like, I'm not leaving. I'm never leaving. We never thought we'd have the opportunity to stay in the presidential suite in such a beautiful hotel. Everything about our stay was perfect. I hope that one day you make it up to Quebec City and to Chateau Frontenac. I highly recommend staying at this historic masterpiece. We sincerely hope that you did enjoy this special tour with us today. It is now up to you to come and visit and truly experience the castle life. Like everyone in the city, I'm very attached to this building. And the silhouette of it, if you can go out on the water, it's really spectacular. Et alors, ce qui est assez impressionnant et ce qui est un peu émouvant aussi, je dois le dire, c'est d'imaginer qu'on séjournait au château de Frontenac des personnalités historiques. Son nom même évoque sa grandeur, le château. Du haut du Cap Diamant, il déploie toute sa magnificence, son charme et son romantisme. Depuis 1893, le château, symbole de la ville de Québec, ne cesse d'intriguer et d'enchanter. Also, we're going to scare ourselves, look up ghost stories. 100%. Like creepy things that happen. Le château Frontenac, c'est un des châteaux les plus hantés du Canada. En fait, il y a eu beaucoup de clients qui ont rapporté des phénomènes paranormaux, des trucs bizarres qui se sont passés. Un homme assis sur un rebord de fenêtre de l'hôtel. Il y a plusieurs clients qui auraient vu une femme en habit de nuit, un corps s'allonger et se rapprocher de plus en plus. Un fantôme féminin avec de longs cheveux noirs. Au cinquième étage, un homme en costume d'époque. Alors, on va passer la nuit là-bas et on va voir ce qui se passe. Oh my god! Attends, je, je vais ouvrir le, le rideau. <rire> D'un coup sec. Ah Putain, je t'ai vu dans le miroir, ça va pas Oh là là! Arrêtez! 